And hello YouTube, so this is Thomas Judge back once again with another instalment of my tutorial series. This is going to be video 05, at which point we're going to be talking about how to actually finally build the master PDF for your custom print. Now in the previous videos I've discussed what sort of tools you need, I've discussed how to actually slice and scan a comic, I've discussed how to clean it up, how to resize it, um, all that sort of information. So today what I'm going to be talking about is once you've got your resized comics, how do you actually make it into a single printable master PDF that you can take to a professional printer and just get them to put it in their machine, press the button and you're good to go. Now to start with for today's video, um, all I've done is thrown together three random issues that I've previously scanned. So one of them is from Sentinel, one of them is from Avengers, part of my Heroes Reborn Omnibus, and the other one is from Fantastic Four, again, part of my Heroes Reborn Omnibus. So, uh, with no further ado, I'm going to cut to the section where I show you exactly how to throw this together. Okay, so here we are in GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Um, so, let's assume you've got all your JPEGs and you've resized them all one by one by one. What you need to do next is bring them all up in your folder. And here we are. I call this my Building Your Master PDF folder tutorial 5 JPEGs. You'll see here I've got my resized JPEGs which are Sentinel there uh, and then Avengers here and then Fantastic Four there. So if you look at the list we're looking at ooh, what are we looking at here? We're looking at 69 items um, and it's here you can change the names to sequence them however you want to sequence them. I don't really care in this case because this is just an example so we've got uh, Sentinel, Avengers, Fantastic Four. So what I do next, and this part's really important, is you just select them all, as I've done here, 69 items selected, and then you right click, and this menu comes up. Now, because I have Adobe, I have the option of converting them to Adobe, you don't want to do that, or combining them in Adobe Acrobat. So I'm going to click on this, And this comes up, which is the combined files wizard, which is part of Adobe Acrobat. Now, once this happens, you just say combined files and it will whir away. So the first thing it does, it checks security settings. And then what it will do is convert every single JPEG individually to a PDF file. And it will then concatenate them all together into one singular PDF file, which it will generally call binder one. This takes a little while, so this is just 69 images. Some of the omnibuses I've done have been 800 images, and that's literally a case of sitting around for 20 minutes while this happens. Um, in a case like this, I've only put together three issues. You're looking at about 69 images. And as you can see here, it sort of whirs its way through one after another, converting to PDF, and then putting together in a sequence. And that ultimately is how it builds your master PDF file from a series of JPEGs. You just have them all in a folder, having resized them all. And then as they're all resized, you then convert them. If you haven't resized them, then what will happen is that your PDF document will have pages that are each individually at different sizes. And that's just a horrific and unprintable nightmare for whoever you take this file to, to get it printed. So you do have to resize them first. And yes, it is onerous. Yes, it does take a lot of time, but it's kind of a labor of love. So you'll see here, it's now done the first two, it's done Sentinel and it's done Avengers. And it's now whirring through the final ones on Fantastic Four. And then we'll have a chance to view the finished article. So again, I'm using Adobe Acrobat 11 here. Other things are available that can work, but this is one that I happen to have on my computer. So why not? Why not use that? Okay, we're getting to the end here. And you'll see it's just whirring away. And there we go. That's the final image. Now, this is Adobe Acrobat Pro that is opened in. Like I said, it's called Binder 1. So I'm going to move to a single page view. This button here moves from full screen or full screen width to single page. So this is a single page. That's what that image looks like. Um, I know you haven't seen what I've done with Sentinel as yet. There will be a later video showing you my custom bound, custom printed Sentinel Omnibus. Um, and then scrolling down, you can see all the pages are perfectly lined up. They're all the perfect right size. Um, I haven't actually bothered um, editing these pages. These are the ones that um, I've just kind of thrown together. So actually, uh, these are not the refined, final, full bleed, perfectly cropped and imaged 
images. Hence, you can see things like here, you've got the little annoying black artifact and so on. Anyway, so that's a page-by-page -page document, but that's only part of the, part of the finished pro process because ultimately what you need to do now is work out whether or not what you actually have is something suitable to print. So by that, I mean go to View, open up View, and go down to Page Display. That brings up this. Now what you want to do is you want to show the cover in Page View, and then you want to move to a two-page view, like so. Ta-da! Obviously, it doesn't look very exciting. So that front page is the first right-hand side page once you open your comic. And now as I scroll down, you'll see it's a two-page view. So now I can see where the left-hand side and the right-hand side is. And as I go down, bit by bit, you'll see it gives me an idea of exactly what the finished two-page product is going to look like. You can't have these as two-page files um, as a PDF because that's not how the printing system works. They all have to be individual pages. So even when they're double-page spreads, you have to go through the laborious process of splitting them in half and resizing them, making sure they all fit. But here we are, we're just kind of going through all the Sentinel pages. And as you see here, they all line up great. That's fine. That's fine. Right, so what we have here is we have... Um, Avengers as a right-hand side page. I personally like to have my covers on the right-hand side and to line up the issues so that's how it works. In this case, it's done it fine without the need for a filler page. Ah, and this is exactly what I mean about a filler page. So, we've got Avengers here, and then you've got an image there. I think it's of J. Jonah Jameson on the left. And the right-hand side, it looks like an oddly truncated image, and that's because it's a double-page spread that obviously splits over this turned page. So, oh no, what that means is there's something wrong with the sequencing of the comic. So, what you have to do is you have to work out where you want um, a filler page to go. Now, a filler page is any page you have as a PDF that's the exact right size, and obviously, in terms of the sizing, you can look at the previous sizing videos that I've done. So, in this case, what I prefer to do is, there's the Avengers page, I prefer to have a filler page here on the left, so you have a single page spread here on the right, and then when I turn over, it'll be a double page. So how does that work? Well, let's see. This page here is page 23, I think. Yeah, let's say it's page 23. Um, if not, it doesn't really matter. I'll show you that in a second. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert my filler page. Now, fortunately, I have my filler page already. Uh, here you are, building your master PDF. And it's this. Um, it's actually a particular page as you'll see in just a second. Uh, insert page after 24. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Okay, so it, I ask you to do this. Press OK. And bang, it's thrown in a page. Now this page, you may or may not recognize, actually the cover of the third installment in my own episodic prose novel, Brave New World, which I always plug at the end of every video. And you'll see here that this cover is converted to the exact right size that you need, width and height. Um, and it's there on the right-hand side. But obviously, that is rubbish. Um, you don't want that in the middle of your comic. So what I would do there is here on the side, you'll see a thumbnail page has opened up automatically. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this image here and I'm going to drag it up so actually it goes there. I'm going to close the thumbnail tab with these arrows here. You see it says close. And then looking up, you've got our Sentinel issue. You've got Avengers with a cover on the right-hand side. Then you have your filler page, and then you have your normal right-hand page. In terms of filler page, yes, I know it's kind of egotistical to put this here, but it's kind of a cool image. It's one I had lying around. And more importantly, it gives you an idea. You can make whatever you want as this filler page. Historically, what I've done is just use plain black pages, or in the case of my Hulk omnibus, dark green pages, um, and just things like that, the simple block colors. Um, however, for my Sentinel Omnibus, I actually created my own filler page with a sort of a custom image on it, which you'll see in a couple of videos' time. So in this case, I stuck a filler page in here. In that case, it's Brave New World from No Gods or Kings. And then on the right-hand side, you've got the image of J. Jonah. And if I scroll down, there you are, double page spread, perfectly set out. Continuing to scroll down, let's see if there's any other instances where that happens. Sometimes it can be kind of annoying. Sometimes you actually need two or three double page spreads um, in every single... Was that a double page spread? No, it's not. See, it's, it's easy to get confused by these. Um, what happens is you need a double page spread in every, uh, in every issue, 
and there can be multiple ones of those and that might mean you need multiple filler pages which means that for every issue even though it's 21 pages it might end up being 26 pages or 30 pages when it prints bit more of a problem with 90s comics which were a big fan of double page splashes especially when you're looking at rob leafield comics but nonetheless something to keep an eye on so here we've got the end of avengers if for example that had ended on this page on the right hand side for whatever reason what i would then need to do is go back and find a suitable point here to throw in a filler page but fortunately it's ended just the way i like it on the left hand side meaning fantastic four is on the right hand side so there is no need for a filler page um looking at this that's fine these aren't double page spreads are they double page no these are all fine you gotta keep your wits about you sometimes with the way some of these panels work out to work out uh exactly whether or not you need to change the balancing to them so none of these are double page spreads that is fine so i'll give you an example here of something you could do if you're a fan as i normally am of having the cover on the right hand side and then having the first image on the right hand side and then have essentially having a blank page here what i could do is insert this after page 48 which i'm going to do so there's my filler page again and if i put it there what we have closing that panel what we have is the cover on the right hand side random filler page or a contents page or a summary page whatever you want to put on this side and then page one on the right hand side uh, which is good because quite a lot um, of the time especially with 90s comics page two and three tend to be a single double page spread so we've done this here it looks great but what you'll find is that is then going to lead to a problem an unwitting problem but a problem nonetheless and i'm just giving you this as a pro tip guys what that means is that you've got a double page spread as your last page which looks fine because you end on a right hand page thing but actually when you're printing it you have to consider on a printed piece of paper what we have there on the right hand side with giganto the back of it is just gonna be a plain white sheet of paper and you don't want that you actually always want your file to end with a single page which will be the left hand side final page even if that left hand side final page is a filler page or a summary page or um, a compilation page of all the covers that you made yourself like i did with my batwing bind um, also on my channel you, you want it to be there as a single left hand page by itself so essentially by putting in that last thing I just put in I've messed up the sequencing so I'm not particularly bothered about keeping it in click on it this is the delete button delete that page yes delete that page and am I sure yes I am and we're back to where we were and what this means is as it goes down you see there giganto last page and that would be the final page and then here on this side you would have the end leaf or the or the inside of the hardcover or whatever it is you're doing um and that's basically how you make your master pdf let's go back to the top that's how you make your master pdf that's how you turn the jpegs into a pdf that's how you put it into a single sequence that's how you sequence it carefully for the left and right that's how you insert filler pages to make sure it all works um and that's how you make sure the balance is just right it's a it's a detailed fiddly little job but it is worth it and then finally when you're done here is the save button and you can save it wherever you like all right okay well that's it that's the um that's the bit about how to create a, a master PDF for printing your custom comic. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully the series is helpful, everyone. Um, I've noticed that I used to get absolutely loads of questions and queries and comments about how to create custom comics. And the minute I started the tutorial series, that number just went down to basically nil. So is, is this exactly what you guys wanted to see? Does this answer your questions? Do you have any outstanding questions? Have I just been really thorough or have you just watched these videos and thought this seems like way too much effort and work to bother doing yourself? Um, let me know in the comments below. It'd be really good to find out whether or not this series is hitting the spot. Um, the next video is going to be diving into stuff like custom dust jackets and how to do slightly more advanced image manipulation so you can make dust jackets and things like that, um, assuming anyone's interested in that. Um, and as always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. And as always, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon I'm picking up the first episode of my prose novel about superheroes and comic books called No Gods or Kings. Uh, the first episode, in fact all the episodes, are less than a dollar and the support is really appreciated. Thanks so much and until next time, 
Stay classy.